Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our TAMS anniversary celebration. We are going to just get started here in a minute um, as we let everyone in the room. But um, so we'll just stand by for a few seconds. And as we get a bunch of people in, then we'll get started. We've got a really fun agenda for you here today. So welcome again. And again, for those of you that are just joining, we'll get started here in just another minute. All right, let's kick this off. We've got quite a few participants here today. So once again, welcome and happy anniversary to TAMS, the Travel and Meeting Society. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we've got some really exciting information to share and a fantastic keynote speaker that we're so excited to have join us today. So we know um, each of you will take away a little bit of something more, either for your own personal development, for your professional development, um, or just a better understanding of what TAMS is about. So as we get started, let's just kick it off. I am Jennifer Seike. I will be your moderator for today. Um, I am the head of global travel for PPD and a member of TAMS, and I've been a member since um, the very beginning. So it's been an exciting journey to see how um, the organization has progressed, and we'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, as you look at our agenda, where we'll talk about where did we start from um, with our founder, Susan Lichtenstein, and then um, talk about you know, where we're going in the future, as well as just membership in general. What, what does it mean to be a member of TAMS and participate and be active in our communities um, and our committees? And that's super important. Um, we have a conversation about our marketplace. And then we're doing a fundraiser with TAMS Airways. And so we'll talk about that. And we'll end on that high note with our keynote speaker, uh, Bart Berkey, which we're super excited to have. So a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. If you have questions, pop them in the Q&A. Um, we also have left the chat open because we believe that all voices matter and all people are important. And if you've got something to say and you want to contribute and add commentary to what we're talking about or your thoughts or ideas that you might have for Tam, that would be the place to do that. So the chat is open. Feel free to um, converse with your fellow attendees. So without further ado, I am go and I am going to be sharing and stop sharing my screen. And we've got some videos, so bear with me as we work through some of just the, the sharing logistics. But um, we have had amazing leadership at TAMS this past year. Um, our founder, who had a great idea, and she'll share that with you a year and a half ago or so, Susan Lichtenstein is here. She's been our chairperson um, as we formally formed the Travel and Meeting Society organization. We'll talk about some exciting announcements that we have with that and, and our, our nonprofit status. And Joanne Lloyd, who sad to say cannot be here today because she's not feeling so well. Um, so Susan and I will converse a little. I'll take Joe's spot. But um, we, we can't thank them enough for all the hard work that they have done over these past 18 months, 24 months, whatever it's been. I feel like 2020 has just kind of gone into the abyss. So um, we're super excited to hear um, from Susan today to talk about um, – what TAMS has been doing over the last year and all the great successes and, and where we're going in the future. So I am going to stop sharing so we can see us the full screen. All right, Susan, how are you? Hi, Jen, how are you? Thanks for I'm such good. a great kickoff. Good. Yeah, I'm so excited, TAMS, one official formal year, woohoo! Even though we've been doing this for a while, okay, you're right, we started off because we had a need, right? And I reached out to the industry and I just said, hey, We've never had something like COVID happen before where travel just stopped. How about we just get together and chat? <laughs> and 10,000 people said, okay. And you were one of them, thank goodness, <laughs> because we could not have done it without you and all the fantastic people of TAMS. Um, and then we put out these two great white papers about you know, what to do during COVID and what to do afterwards for the next three years. And just such a brain trust of incredible leaders in the industry. Um, we decided then that all voices matter buyers and suppliers together, whatever you are in your position in your company, working or not working, we want you. 
Um, we want to hear from you. No stripes, no titles. Come on in, join TAMS. We want to know what you're thinking about. And that worked out great. And then right after we had such great success with those wonderful papers um, or reports, I think, as we call them, which you can find on the TAMS website um, today and still very useful, um, we all got together again and said, let's keep going. This is such a great place to be. This is such a warm place to be. And the thing that matters first, regardless of what the output is, is that we are one voice. We are together in this, right? So it doesn't matter who you are. It's the fellowship. It's the networking. It's the brain trust of all people that are equal and diverse and inclusive that matter more than anything to us in TAMS. And that platform has just developed amazing results out of TAMS. We have um, over 13 committees now. Ridiculous. We had an incubator this year. First in the history of travel, we have our own TAMS incubator, where we sent through companies to the incubator. We had investors look in. I know you guys are going to share more about that later. I don't want to steal that thunder. And it's just been an amazing experience. We have communications and engagement. We have finance. We have diversity inclusion team that is the best in the world and has been awarded many awards since we got started at TAMS. Um, we've had many TAMS members in the top 50 women because we are 60% women in TAMS. Pretty cool. 3,000 members in TAMS and over 50% buyers. And not because we asked them to come in, because they want to be here. It's a safe place to talk because Every voice matters, no matter where you come from. So the output of TAM from the technology teams to the data teams, to the sustainability teams, to the softer teams of diversity and inclusion, to the, we think with the heart, we think with the heart, there's my heart here, right, Jen? We think with the head, right? We think with our hearts, we think together. And that's just caused this, almost like this speed road to success to innovation. We've put out more products in TAMS than I could ever have dreamed of putting out over five years. I've come out in one year in TAMS, and I can't wait to see where it goes next. Yeah, you know, it's amazing because it, it's always been so organic. Like, but we, we, have, we have committees, we have structures, we have leaders, we have all of these amazing people that it doesn't matter what your background is or where you come from, whether working, not working, whatever, it's about, I think, the passion to drive innovation, change, um, accomplishments, and all of that in sort of that travel and meetings industry, like the sustainability committee. I'll talk a little bit about that later. They put out some stuff. I've got a great video from the tech committee of all the hard work they've done. Um, but just, I would like you to talk, because one of the biggest highlights you just mentioned was the incubator. Can you just talk a little bit about sort of the incubator? I know we have also the marketplace, which you and Mike Daly are going to talk about here in a minute. But I think the incubator is important because it's, it's done something in such a short amount of time that we've never seen before in the industry. So maybe you could just add a little bit more color to that and, sure. and share with our, our viewers this morning. So an incubator, for those who don't know, and I'll just do my best because I'm not as smart as that team. So I'll just do my best to tell you what that is. It's really a place where new companies or new products can come in and get mentored, right? And um, get, get uh, mentors from around the industry, um, get ideas and thoughts from around the industry, present what they're trying to do around the industry. And so we actually, not we, you, TAM's committee members actually created the first incubator that I know of. Um, in an association where companies came in and bid um, and showed their wares to see which of the first three, I think it was five companies actually, who we could take um, into the incubator because you can only do a certain amount at a time. Um, then they did their presentations to the world. Um, it was very global. I mean, we had uh, a couple of African companies, a couple of European companies, a couple of American companies. Um, and then those companies that um, were in there then were matched up with uh, either investors or larger companies that they're getting mentored from. And it's been incredibly successful. I can't wait for the next round. We recommend everybody try it, right? If you're a new company and you want to join us, come into the incubator. But what's important about that is that um, it's not just an investor or supplier thing. It's you know both voices together, right? So when you when you have everybody in the same room listening together, you're getting real feedback from both sides of the industry. 
it's amazing. It's amazing what you could learn so quickly inside of that. So we're really excited about that. I do want to talk about the members for a minute, if you give me a, a chance. Yeah. The membership of yeah. TAMS is is everything of TAMS, which is so amazing, right? We don't have the drama of politics. We don't have the drama of, you know, who's a leader and who's not a leader. Leaders in TAMS really remove the obstacles for the members, right? They work so hard to keep TAMS heartbeat going. They are amazing people who volunteer their time to keep this going. And the membership is completely volunteering to keep these things going. And and when I look at the brilliance, I always make, I always laugh and say, boy, if we can make a corporation out of TAMS, we'd all be billionaires because the brilliance of these members are freely giving their times, top people in the industry, right? People that never had their voices heard or having their voices heard, right? People that never had an opportunity to talk about what's on their mind. I mean, it really chokes me up when I, when I think about people who may not be working, people who are working, to see everybody working together and networking together and hearing voices that I've never heard before that are now my friends. You know, I think about people like Michelle Grant, who I didn't know before. And I think about Linda Bico and Carol, and now they are my dear friends and such brilliant people that I get choked up about the importance of TAMS for that reason. If you open the path to all voices matter and everywhere you want to go, you will only see the brilliance of people. And that's just been so true in Pam's. I also want to do a shout out to Joanne Lloyd, right? So she is just, she couldn't be here today. She's not feeling that great, but she has put up with me for over 365 days. And if you think working with somebody with my energy level is easy, it is not. So I just want to shout out to her to say thank you for keeping me in line um and and for everybody else so yeah she's awesome great thank you so on one last comment and then we're going to turn over to some of the amazing work that the technology committee has done where do you see tams next year yeah so i think now that we have the foundation built and i'm going to make this announcement sorry mark but i'm going to make this announcement tams is officially a recognized irs approved 501c <laughs> I finally went through a couple of weeks ago, so I can't be more proud to say this is the first time I've ever had, I'm, unlike you, Jim, with all your tons of experience, I had none before I joined TAM. So to be able to see the 501C come through with Mark and his finance team and the governance team and all that work been done, I am so, so feeling so blessed to be a part of that. So we are official. Now that we have the foundation and the platform and the lineup, I can't imagine the development and the innovation that will come out of TAMS in the years to come. If this is how much we produced in year one, we're gonna blow it off the roof year two, three, four, five, and six. So congratulations to everybody at TAMS and happy, happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. All right, so we've got some amazing work that the tech committee's done. So I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen and sharing a video and hopefully I don't blow anything up because if you've ever run one of these, the thing that's gonna blow up is gonna be a video. So let's see here. Wow. Here we go. Welcome to the TAMS Technology Committee. I'm Caroline Meyer, the co-chair of the Technology Committee, along here today with Peter. Yep, that's me. Hey, Peter Soltakis. And let's just dive right in. Caroline, what have we done in the past year as the Technology Committee? A lot. That's what I would say. But let's start with the G Suite because it was pretty great. Um, we got this set up so that we could get everybody in TAMS on. Oh. Onto one uh, collective place to share documents and we gave everyone a user um, uh, login as well so they can all coordinate and communicate with each other again, as well as share and collaborate online in the G Suite with the docs itself. And then we went ahead and we got started and created a website. Peter, you wanna talk about that? Yep, so we have the behind the scenes. Now we have what you can see publicly with tamstravel.org. Our digital subcommittee launched this late last summer. And as you can see, there's a scrolling list of a lot of things that we've delivered just as TAMS. But uh, really, this is where you can go and get involved, learn more about TAMS, check out the different committees, view all of our different publicly available resources, coming events. You can also donate. We are actively seeking donations as a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Reach out to us or get your company listed on the marketplace. So that went live again late last summer. Let's talk about now what we've really been doing uh, in terms of the projects. Caroline. 
Absolutely. Our committee got together and mapped up the entire year. These are the first three projects that have come out. We're going to get into greater detail right now by starting with the evaluator. Peter? Yep, the evaluator. So should you travel or should you video conference? This launched early spring 2021. And the idea is based on the different criteria selected by the end users. It makes a recommendation of whether you should probably travel, you should probably video conference, maybe you need to do more research, or perhaps you should talk with someone within your organization about which one might be better suited towards your desired outcome. Furthermore, we also launched the TAMS technology assessment tool. So you can download this here on our website, check out the press release. The idea, of course, though, is we deliver a high level as well as a comprehensive assessment. So 39 or well over 150 questions about how to best score all the different facets across all the geographies in a buyer's travel program. So there are so many different facets. We thought technology is travel. So go ahead there and check out the assessment tool. Further, Caroline, the navigator. Yeah, the Navigator just launched. This is a great tool uh, to find different solution types, um, different products, et cetera. You can base it on the travel task, your pre-trip, on-trip, or post-trip. You can go ahead and select a solution type, and then the suppliers will list underneath it, and you can either hyperlink off into the supplier to find more information about them directly, or go right into the TAMS marketplace because they may have a booth in there where you can shop anonymously and get in touch with them, learn more about their uh, product, et cetera. If you're not on here and you wanna get listed, just simply click on the button, fill out the form and we'll get you on there. So much exciting things going on, Peter. I don't even know what to say. I'm so looking forward to the rest of this year. Aren't you? Absolutely. And if you wanna get involved, check us out, tamstravel.org. Get involved with the technology committee. We have a very exciting project roadmap for this second half of the year. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was amazing. Um, so thank you so much to the technology committee. They've really done a lot of work um, as all of our committees have. We're gonna highlight just a few of them today. Um, if you ever wanna get involved with one of the committees, tamstravel.org, the committees are there. We're always looking for volunteers. Um, but now we're going to talk a little bit about membership and what membership looks like today and what it might look like in the future of TAMS. Um, and so Susan Shea from Accor, I am going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Jen. Hi, I'm Susan Shade. Beth Tothel and I have been exploring our TAMS membership committees and how we each work together. It is hard to believe that out of the ashes of a March 2020 industry meltdown, rose our society in which hundreds came together to support, nourish, and power forward. It's just one year and our members and supporters have accomplished so many important endeavors. TAMS, as an immediate pandemic response, built a safety standards document, as you've heard, with each committee contributing their research. And then during the height of the pandemic, Resilience mode was in full gear with job search and pivoting webinars, as well as offering a platform where we each could stand, raise our heads, be accounted for, and make a difference. Now moving forward into recovery, we are focusing on continuing education, as you've also heard, in areas such as technology products and calculators, tech incubators, trip evaluators, and career longevity activities. Different membership committees have produced videos, webinars, and platforms for industry and startup organizations. In advancing our industry impact, we need to foster the needs of our community. And we need to have a membership that will explore and broaden the character of travel. Our strength is coming from a place where we all are welcome and we all have an equal voice. Will we be a room full of supporters who will benefit from what our society's committed players organize? Or will each of us as a member participate in helping to shape the programming and initiatives? We want to know what membership in TAMS would mean to you and what would it look like? To help us, we're going to post up a poll. And um, we're going to put that poll up now for you and ask you a few questions um, to help us more uh, what we should do and where we should go from here. 
Shari? Poll time. Question one, what excited you most about being a member of TAMS? Multiple choice here, you can pick more than one. Education, network, networking, new job search, curiosity, looking for something mean, meaningful to participate in during the pandemic or all of the above. Again, you can pick as many as you wish or all of the above. Next question. Oh, here's our responses. It looks like networking was the pri primary selection for each of you, uh, and then also looking for something meaningful to participate in. Um, very good, thanks. Next question. I could do a tap dance while we're waiting. That wouldn't be fun. Okay, question two. What would you like to see more of as a TAMS member? Again, you can pick one more or all. More opportunities to join a committee, more webinars, events, more social media information on business travel news, more networking opportunities or all of the above. We'll give it another second, and then we'll show you the results. Okay, more networking opportunities and more webinars and events. Very good. Um, it looks like we're having a networking theme so far. Good to know. Okay, and now we'll have a third question that will pop up. Question three, are you interested in the TAMS marketplace as a resource for members, as a buyer, as a supplier, for insight into what's going on in the industry? You're not familiar with the TAMS marketplace or you're not interested at all in the TAMS marketplace. Let us know what you're thinking about the TAMS marketplace. Okay, I think we're ready for the results now. Okay, for insight into what's going on in the industry. Great, good, good thinking. All right, and then there are some um, that would join as a supplier too. Great. Okay, our next question. Question four. We get to the money. How much would you be willing to spend per year for your membership in TAMS? $99, this is in USD, $99, $49, $29, or you're only interested in a complimentary membership. Okay. I think we're ready for those results. All right, somewhere in the middle there, great results. Okay, and our next question. What would help you become more involved and aware of TAM's happenings? Again, you can pick multiples, you can pick one, you can pick all of the above. We leave it open to you. Monthly newsletter, 
general updates on LinkedIn, information updated more regularly on the TAMS website, regular email communications, or all of the above. Okay, let's see those results. Oh, this is good. We have a good even split among many different types of communication. Great. Thank you so much for um, our polling questions. And now, um, before I turn over the mic, uh, as you can see, Beth has posted up a link to our membership page and the different committee opportunities that you'll find there. So. If you haven't ever gone to the TAMS website, please do. Congratulations to us all. And now back to you, Jen. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, Susan. And that was great insight. Thank you to all the participants who participated in the poll. That's really important for us to get a, a kind of a pulse on what you guys are thinking um, around expectations from TAMS. So, now we are going to turn it back over to Susan and we're going to add Mike Daly to the conversation and they are going to share with us the marketplace. So that one marketplace where people said, I don't know anything about the marketplace, that conversation with Susan and Mike are going to give you everything you need to know about the marketplace. Um, and very I'm quickly, turn it over to you guys very now. quickly. Yeah. Talk fast. <laughs> Susan, how are you? Good morning. Good. How are you, sir? Good morning. I'm doing great. I'm coming live at you from Las Vegas. Um, oh, I wish I was there with you. Me. Same, same. We got to hit the black. <laughs> but I know we're, we, we we're short on time. So let's talk about the marketplace. What is it? Yeah, so TAM's marketplace was built to have a, a place where our suppliers can go in the industry at a very reasonable cost, only $299. You can't do better than that. Um, to, to be on our marketplace where they get a place to put in their information. We have an appointment calendar in there and the buyers can shop there for service that they need anonymously until they get to the supplier of their choice and then they can give them their contact information. So it's so cool. And then we can track the clicks for the suppliers. It's a very reasonable price. We have a ton of categories inside of our marketplace. So if you're a company that services many areas inside the marketplace, like air and travel and TMCs or whatever you wanna do, you can click on multiple categories. You could find the marketplace at tamstravel.org. Just look for marketplace, click on that, and it'll tell you if you wanna be on the marketplace, click here and just follow the bouncing ball. It's so easy to sign your, your company up inside that marketplace. And if you're a buyer, it says click here, and then you can shop around and look at everything you want. And it's not just travel companies, right? We've got career companies, we've got um, consulting companies, we've got all education companies. You, there's so many choices that you can put your company into. We're so excited because the cost is like ridiculous. I mean, my board was like, what are you talking about only $2.99, right? So, you know, it's just so reasonable, such a great place. And did I mention we're over 50% buyers in Sam's Mike? But we are. So here's a heads up. If you want to get to over 3,000 people for less than $300, get in there, sign up on Tam's Marketplace today. It's fun, it's fabulous, and it's fast. You're preaching to the choir. I was one of the first, uh, first suppliers that signed up. So get in there and, and get signed up. Thanks, Susan. I appreciate that. You're welcome, Mike. Take care. Yep. See you guys. All right. So the marketplace, if you are not a part of the marketplace, we would highly recommend that you take a look and join. Um, all right. So we've had some work. I'm just going to share my screen again from our sustainability committee. So let's go in and see what they've been doing. Um, so the leads for the sustainability committee are uh, Glenn Thorson and Lynn Good. Um, they have been really actively engaged and focused on sort of their global goals for sustainable development, right? Everything from hunger to renewable energy to water to air, clean water, all of those things. They've been doing a lot of really great work for the TAMS community. Um, here they are, right? So Cheryl Benjamin, she is the advisor for this committee. They have been very, very busy. And let's see some of the work that they've done. 
So first, they put out a sustainability handbook, sort of the sustainability 101 level setting for your company. What does that look like? And then share that introductory um, handbook in a webinar series. And that was highly successful. Um, then they partnered up with between sustainability and innovation and disruption, which I thought was amazing because they had a panel that discussed the synergies. How do we drive sustainability? How do we drive these initiatives through innovation, through technology that can help our organizations be better? Um, as they move forward in the year, you're going to see them put out more content regarding all the different categories within the, tra the managed travel space and meeting space. So lodging, mobility, rail, flights, talking about things like sustainable aviation fuel, reducing your carbon footprint, um, carbon offsets, things like that, and how these different categories are doing it. So they have a ton of work to do. We all do in this area. Um, and so we're super excited to kind of share what they've been doing over this past year. All right, so now we are moving on to our next topic. And again, if you guys have any questions, post them in the Q&A. You want to chat with each other, that's great. I am going to put on my next hat and I am going to invite Michelle Grant from Ritchie Brothers to join me on TAMS Airways. Here we go. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hey, Jen, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Captain Grant, what do we have today? Captain Grant. Hello, welcome everyone. This is your captain speaking. Welcome to TAMS Airways Flight 2021. If you're on board this flight today, we are on our way to the recovery of the travel industry and the return to meetings and events, Destination 2022. I wanna thank you for choosing to fly with us today and for your continued support of TAMS. Before I hand it over to our flight attendant, Jennifer, I wish you a pleasant day. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this flight. The future looks bright. Over to you, Jen. Thank you, Captain Grant. Again, welcome aboard TAMS Airways Flight 2021, and our destination is 2022. I'd like to introduce you to our fall fundraising campaign, Fill the Flight. That's right, fill the flight, people. We have 191 seats available to purchase, and we are not ashamed to oversell this baby. <laughs> <laughs> seats are available in all classes, including the closet to first class. The lavatory? The lavatory, yep. So our prices start at $10 to sit in the bathroom on this flight for 10 bucks, or you can go all the way up to the fancy first class seats that are only $100. And I know you fancy first classes are out there, so don't be shy. We need your help to fill the flight and fundraise for TAM. All this amazing work takes resources, right? So we're going to ask that you're able to visit our, our website's being updated right now. You'll see it tomorrow with the actual plane. Um, I'll send out reminder messages to everyone so you don't miss the opportunity, but you'll be able to go onto the website, pick your seat, and make your donation. Again, as small as $10, as big as $100. We also have our regular donations, so if you really want to give a lot more money, you can do that too. We will take whatever you can afford. Um, also, we are a 501c3, as Susan mentioned, so your donations are tax deductible. We all need those nowadays. So we are super excited to have you on board TAMS Airways. Your support is what makes this magic happen in the TAMS community. We cannot do it without your voluntary support and your financial, financial support. So on behalf of TAMS Airways and all of us at TAMS, thank you for all that you do for each other, our community, and our industry. We are better together. Now, I'm going to invite you to sit back, relax, and get ready for our keynote speaker, Bart Berkey. Thanks, Captain Grant. Over and out. All right, so Bart, are you ready? Because we're about ready for you. So Bart Berkey is joining us today. He is the founder and CEO of, CEO of Most People Don't a motivational storytelling and sales training company dedicated to encouraging individuals to do when most people don't. Bart draws upon his real life situations to create memorable analogies and messages that are easy to apply. His trademark, most people don't mantra is scientifically and psychologically proven to encourage improved behaviors in others. I might have to use that with my kids. He is a former hospitality executive and Ritz-Carlton recruiter that has observed success created by those that do. 
Barr has also been recognized as being one of the top 25 extraordinary minds in sales and marketing. In 2021, he was awarded the Best Luxury Keynote Speaker and Podcast Host. He was also nominated for his work by Forbes for their Next 1000 list, celebrating entrepreneurs and startups in America. Finally, his book, Most People Don't and Why You Should, resides in the top 1% of book sales on Amazon. So I would like everyone to please give a warm welcome. If we were in person, we'd all be doing this to Bart Berkey, and I am going to stop sharing and turn it over to him. Bart, welcome. Jennifer, thank you, thank you. Um, greetings to Tams. Um, hello to the Susan and the founders and all of the great people that are part of this organization. And I'm just listening to the bio. I have to make that shorter because that's a lot to live up to. But I am excited to be able to chat with everyone. And here, here's great news. And I want to start off with some great news. Okay, if you can see my little green bracelet, hugs and handshakes are back. So I just returned back from an international trip. I was gone seven days. I was fortunate and blessed to be able to do seven presentations, seven keynotes in seven days. And at several of these events, you were asked to choose a bracelet. So if you chose green, it says hugs and handshakes. And if you would choose other colors, you know, it's distance, high fives, uh, fist bumps. But I have to tell you that at this event that I was at, more than 90% of people chose green. So great news is that hugs and handshakes are back and we know that it's so important in our travel world. One of the most brilliant things that I love about travel and I love about our industry is that when we come back, we have learned something, whether it's from people that we met or whether it's experiences that we had. This last trip was in Cancun and I'm not bragging, I'm just kind of sharing the facts. Um, I was very fortunate, but I learned something about Mayan wisdom. There is a greeting very similar to what you might say as namaste or a greeting of hello, but this Mayan greeting is called in Lakesh. And what that means is you are my other me. And the symbol, the Mayan symbol is like this, one hand and greeting with another hand. You are my other me. And I believe that that is just so powerful. If I do harm to you, I do harm to myself. Everything is united everything is connected, everything is affected. How simple yet how powerful is that? You are my other me. We are so important to each other in how we make individuals feel and how we treat each other. And I believe that that's a perfect lead into TAMS and the celebration of your one year anniversary. And as Susan was sharing, that every single voice matters. How simply brilliant is that? Every voice matters. And it doesn't matter what your experience is, what your title is, if you're a big company, a small company, if you are unemployed or if you were employed, every single voice matters within TAMS. You're united. On this trip also, one young lady shared this thought with me that you are more than your business card. You are more than your business card. It's your name. And yes, you might be working for one company today and a different company tomorrow, but it is you and it's your brand. And I want to share with you just a quick little story. It's called Snubbed. And this is before my Ritz Carlton days many, many years ago. I would always like to take pictures of our client events because I've been in sales for most of my life. Individuals would come in, I would have the camera and I would take pictures of the customers arriving and the customers arriving with perhaps a member of my sales team. And I'll never forget, I was trying to make small talk as people entered into the room and they didn't know me. They didn't know I was new to my position and more than half of them ignored me. Do you know why? They thought I was a photographer. So imagine this, I'm clicking pictures, clicking pictures, clicking pictures. Oh, have you been here before? There's great cocktails over there. If you like um, appetizers, you can go over there. And they were ignoring me. Not everybody, but more than half of the people ignored me because they thought I was a photographer. Moments later, reception is over. I stand up on stage with a microphone. Welcome to my event. We are so glad that you're here. I'm the host, Bart Berkey, and my team is thrilled that you're here. We should make sure that we treat people well. Maya Angelou always talks about how you make people feel. If I ask you the question, 
who won American, American Idol three years ago, or America's Got Talent five years ago, or even who won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, most people are not going to be able to remember those things. It's passing thoughts. But if I were to ask you, can you remember your favorite elementary school teacher and why? I bet you every single hand, every single chat box is going to explode. Yes, I can tell you exactly about Miss Burroughs, my first grade teacher. She made me feel special because she played music at lunchtime with her guitar every single time. Very special, how we continue to make people feel. In La Keche, united, Tams is united. I know that everyone is certainly busier than ever. Some organizations are not fully staffed back. You're trying to balance work and family. There's more adjustments that need to be made. So imagine this, a boulder is in your way and the boulder can be all of these different obstacles. And I've surveyed about 5,000 people since I'll say pandemic one, since this setback occurred, I surveyed 5,000 different people and I asked them, what is your number one obstacle in life right now? And they'll say work lack of balance, the pandemic, finding time, not having enough time to get things done. I'm fearful of the future. What can we do about it? Here's another little parable. Imagine this, there are three frogs sitting on a log. All three frogs decide to jump. How many frogs are left on a log? Three frogs sitting on a log, all three frogs decide to jump. How many frogs are left sitting on a log? You could have various answers. And someone just shared this recently with me. And I said, well, I guess it kind of depends. And the answer is three frogs remain on the log because deciding to do something and actually taking action to do something are really two different stories, two different stories. We need to make sure that we are taking actions. You have that boulder in your path. So what can we do? My theory and my philosophy is do what most people don't. Do what most people don't. Simple, three words, easy to remember. It's also a great philosophy that ties into this statement. It's easy to be, but better to become. I can remain unfit tomorrow by doing absolutely nothing. If I wanna become better, I need to do something. I need to take action. I need to wake up early. I need to eat healthy. I need to put on my walking shoes or my running shoes. It's easy to be, but better to become. Most people don't, simple statement, do what they know they should do. Imagine this, if you've not had the fortune of travel, travel recently, next time you go to an airport, look to see choices that are being made between stairs and escalators. Just watch and observe. And if I were to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, I had a heart attack two years ago, true story, I'm fine now, but I wanna make sure that I'm getting exercise. What advice would you tell me? Bart, you should take the stairs. If I wanna increase my cardio, I wanna get exercise, movement, blood flow, we all know that we should take the stairs, it's better. So there was a study done in Europe. They watched 27,000 people make a decision, stairs versus escalator, stairs versus escalator. Now these were people that were physically able if they wanted to, to take the stairs, not too much luggage, not carrying 10 children, but they could make a decision. 1% of people chose to go up the stairs and then they were interviewed, why? I either had a life-changing experience or a member of my immediate family was facing a health crisis. The rest of the individuals, the majority said, I'm lazy, I'm lazy. It was easier for me to go up the escalator, do what most people don't, take the stairs. Part of the survey also that I've conducted in the research, I ask individuals, name one thing professionally that you know you should do that you've not yet had a chance to do. We're not saying that you're never gonna do it, but it's a should do professionally that you've not yet done. The answers come in, in it, we can segment them into really some appropriate buckets. They wanna they want to further their education. So they wanna get certified. 
They want to expand their clientele more. They want to help change people's lives for the better. Yes, they want to make more money, but they want to become better. I ask the same question from a personal perspective. What is one thing that you know you should do that you've not yet had a chance to do? Overwhelmingly, it is about getting fit, increasing your health and well-being, overwhelmingly. And then along those lines, it's also about travel, about starting new foundations, about volunteering more. So what is preventing you from doing these should do's? Survey again, and it's not unusual, the same things pop up, time, excuses, focus, fear, myself. The great news is we have the ability of changing all of those excuses, all of those obstacles. So they're no longer a boulder. It now becomes a little bit of pebble because it's how we envision things, how we envision things. If we look at the things that are preventing, I also categorize them into themes and I'll share with you three of them, three takeaways, and I'm calling them doing distractors. We're gonna be able to crush the doing distractors by doing three things. The first one is prioritization. Most people don't prioritize. As a motivational storyteller, as uh, Jennifer introduced me as, I'm gonna share with you a story and you will remember the story 22 times more than you would data. And I have a wonderful PowerPoint slide. I Googled, uh, what, is the, what is the most difficult PowerPoint slide to read? And it has thousands of points and arrows. I'm just gonna share with you a little story. Most people don't prioritize. And this story is called, Daddy, Can I Show You? This was years ago. I was presenting at a resort. I had a few hours before I was getting up on stage. And I decided I'm going to take a dip in the pool. Let me feel like I'm on vacation. I jump into the pool. And there's no one there except a nine-year-old girl swimming by herself. And the pool is rather deep. She doesn't have water wings on or anything. And I'm just curious as a parent myself, who is watching this young girl swim? I scan the pool deck, still don't really initially see anybody. And then all of a sudden I hear this little girl say, daddy, daddy, can I show you my backstroke? Four rows back, there was a gentleman, casual business attire, reading glasses on, furiously doing work, 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 work. He looks up and he says, sure, peanut. And literally this happens, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Peanut, that was amazing. You're so good. And furiously goes back to doing work, doing work, doing work. Then we hear, daddy, daddy, can I show you my freestyle? He looks up. Sure, princess. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Pumpkin, that was terrific. Goes back to doing work. In the period of one hour, this nine-year-old girl got 16 seconds of attention from her father. 16 seconds of attention, and it broke my heart. Where was this gentleman's priorities? What was the most important thing to him? And if we asked him, how was your vacation? He probably would say, it was busy. I had to do a lot of work. And uh, you know, I have to do a lot of work because I need to make money to be able to provide to go to these great resorts with my daughter. And if you ask the daughter, would she have said, dad, Vacation was fine, but we could stay home and go to the local community pool if you jump in the water with me a little bit. I would have been just as happy. Where were the priorities? So when we are looking at all the things that we need to get done, what is the most important? And I evaluate things this way. How great are the benefits of doing something compared to how severe the consequences are of not doing something? Benefits of doing, jumping in the pool, great relationship with his daughter, a fun time, making others feel special. How severe would the consequences be? Maybe she doesn't wanna go on vacation next time because her dad is too busy working. This next quote, I think is very, very powerful because it sums up why we all work so hard, why we do what we do. This is the quote, if the why is important enough, the how becomes easy. If the why is important enough, the how becomes easy. That gentleman could have found the way to do work maybe when his daughter was sleeping. He didn't. 
If the why is important enough, the how becomes easy. He could have figured out a way. And when I share this statement, I like to uh, pull up my phone and ask individuals, show me your why. And the majority of the time, the photos that are on your home screen on your phone, whether it's family, grandchildren, partners, spouses, friends, pets, dogs, you name it, more often than not, that is your why. And you can always look at that to realize. The second thing that most people don't when faced with obstacles is show flexibility. A very brief story, and we have one more before we conclude. Most people don't show flexibility. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna show flexibility. Imagine a windstorm is gonna come to your home or apartment or your office building tonight. Windstorm is coming, we saw it on the forecast. Would you rather your home, apartment, or office be surrounded by strong, tall, majestic oak trees with deep roots that have been around for hundreds of years, or would you rather it be surrounded by bamboo? Usually we'll get various answers, and if you're from the Northeast <laughs> and you have seen what has happened during windstorms, my choice is going to be bamboo because big, strong oak trees, while tough, resist the wind, nature will win, and they will topple over. And we've seen cars and houses being destroyed, sadly, by trees, by oak trees. But if you are bamboo, you're a grass, you're flexible, you're going to bend in the wind. Bend in the wind, be flexible, hashtag be bamboo. I shared this story a couple of months ago, and one young woman continuously sends me a note about once a week, sharing with me how she is flexible. And she simply says, hashtag be bamboo at the end of every sentence, hashtag be bamboo. So we can remember to be flexible. So, so far we've gone through prioritization. Daddy, can I show you? Second point, be flexible, be bamboo. And the last takeaway that individuals do not do, but you should do in order to overcome your obstacles is focus. Avoid distractions, align yourself with the things that are most important based on your values. Because we know how to prioritize, we know how to be flexible, focus on the things that are the most important. By removing distractions, I've learned recently, there was an article by an organization called Filter, and they list the top 100 productivity tools. The number one thing, and please do research on this later or connect with me and I can share more with you, is time boxing. Imagine this, I'm busy, I'm a supplier, I'm <clears throat> responding to all these RFPs. Okay, great, you're busy, but when are you actually making proactive calls? The point is, if we have doctor's appointments, if we have a TAMS meeting like this, a TAMS call, if we have a committee meeting for TAMS, we're going to put it on your calendar and it's gonna be blocked in time. Time boxing also suggests that you put time box in for proactive work. From eight to nine, I'm gonna reach out to new customers. From eight to nine, I'm gonna reach out to new suppliers. From 10 until noon, perhaps I'm reactive. I'm just gonna look at emails coming back in or I'm going to use social media a little bit more. And then guess what? At 12 noon, put on your calendar, I'm gonna take time to have lunch. I'm gonna maybe go outside. Maybe I'm gonna take the stairs. Maybe I'm gonna go for a little bit of a walk because it's easy to be, but it's better to become time box. And individuals will ask me, well, Bart, what if I wanna just relax and watch Netflix? Well, guess what? You can, but you're gonna time box it and you're gonna give yourself an hour to watch something, Squid Games on Netflix. You're gonna give yourself an hour and you're gonna do another half hour for social media. And then you're gonna put a time for bed. But when you do these things, you are deliberating your day. Deliberate your day. You decide what is most important. You decide what you're gonna focus on. You decide your priorities. You decide your flexibility. And the point is, I'm just kidding. Did you think it, it froze for a second? Okay, I'm just kidding. The point is, don't wait till something stops, till something freezes, till you have a health scare till you have, God, God forbid, you have a heart attack like I did. Don't wait, do it now. You can do these things. You have new tools, you have a great resource, you have a lovely organization like TAMS celebrating one year that provides contacts and networking and learning. It's easy to be and it's better to become. But my suggestion to all of you, please, 
continue doing what most people don't. It's going to make a difference. We're going to unite each other. You are my other me. And we're going to continue to learn in this industry, grow and travel meetings and events, and just celebrate one another. I'm so proud to have the chance to chat with you all. Uh, I am the only Bart Berkey, fortunately, in the world, B-A-R-T-B-E-R-K-E-Y. Um, my website, mostpeopledon't.com, but I would love to be able to connect with you. And as most people don't send LinkedIn conversations immediately, I try to have my assistant send in a LinkedIn invite to everyone that she could see on the screen. So please connect with me and let me know if I can be a resource. This was simply just one topic. I have many other stories, many other topics, and would love to be able to share more positivity. So to the TAMS group, congratulations, one year, happy anniversary. And looking at TAMS, you are certainly an organization that does what most people don't. Ah, uh, thank you, Bart. Big round of applause. I wish we were in person, um, but thank you so much. That was very inspirational and I've got lots of thoughts around the fact that I need to get some things together in my own world. So, <laughs> so you've helped at least one person on this call. So thank you very much. So what's really important is, you know, for us to be able to provide a speaker like Bart, um, you know, take support. And so we've got a great sponsor of um, Bart's uh, presentation today from Smart Hotel Rate. So I just want to show a really quick 30 second video um, from Smart Hotel Rate and then we will um, close up here in just a second. So let's try this video sharing thing again. Make sure I don't screw it up. Okay, so one moment. And here we go. At Smart Hotel Rate, we create transformative technology that benefits the business travel industry by dramatically reducing the manual processes that have hampered business travel management. Smart Hotel Rate replaces these processes with real-time data, continuous audits, and dynamic workflows, all of which solve many perennial issues and enable innovation, such as direct booking with enhanced duty of care. We are enabling a new generation of business travel in which transparency, flexibility, and accuracy come first. All right, thank you so much, Smart Hotel Rate, for sponsoring um, Bart's magnificent um, presentation to us. Um, I would encourage all of you to, um, if you haven't explored what Smart Hotel Rate is, um, to go ahead and check them out, smarthotelrate.io. Um, I work with them, they are amazing. So we are now getting ready to go into our closing mode. So let me share my screen, Susan. Um, I really wish Joe was here. Um, Susan and Michelle, if you want to rejoin the video. I want a hat, oh, Michelle being still very clear. Brand. I do not have a hat. So one of you had better send me a hat, just saying. You can, so, have my, you can see the flight center the, the captain are both. Stuff. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So thank you all. This is a great, great anniversary celebration. I mean, just a great, great year anniversary celebration. We didn't even get to touch on the multitudes of things that Sam's done. We need a whole day celebration for that. So who knows? Maybe that's coming up next year. We'll all get together and party and celebrate everything. So um, I do want to thank everybody. I do want to thank Joe again for being by my side. But we have some exciting news. Ready, Jen? We have some exciting news. So at TAMS, because we have no drama, no politics, which is woohoo, I think Bart said really well when he said we're a little bit different when we just really mean all voices matter. We also roll over our leadership positions, right? Isn't that cool? So basically members can become leaders if they're on the committee in one year over, you can roll over. Leaders become the advisors to those committees and also our board of directors. So there's no politics and no drama and the continuity is always. So that's happening right now. And Joe and my position as chair and co-chair is the ones that roll off. <laughs> so I will be there torturing the committees next year because I'll be joining like eight of them. I hope they don't mind. Um, and I have so many things to do, but I will be stepping down as chair and co-chair, which will start almost immediately. So I'd like to introduce to everybody our new chair and co-chairs, which is you, Jen Stanky, is our new chairperson and CEO of Sam's. Woohoo! Congratulations. And our vice chair is Thank Michelle Grant. 
your co-pilot over there, who will be the new vice chair of TAM starting in November. We'll hang out with you guys until you don't need us anymore in those roles. And we'll see you, I will see you on the committee. So get ready committee leaders because here comes the craziest member in town. So thank you, thank you everyone for everything you did. And Jen, new chairperson, I'll let you have the final word. Oh, thank you, Susan. So we couldn't have done it without you. So kudos to you and to Joe for all you've done. We've got big shoes to fill. Um, we are open. We want to hear what you want to do. We want to get more involved. So anything that you need from us, feel free to reach out. If you are not a member of TAM, please go onto the website and join. If you have a passion for something or you just want to learn more, join the committees. Um, don't forget to fill the plane. So we need, the, we need to raise funds so we can keep the good work up. Thank you so much, A, to Bart as our keynote speaker, to all of our committees, to Smart Hotel Rate for making it possible, to every single person that said one word in a committee meeting that helped write a paper, do whatever it is, put on a show. Thank you to Sherry from um, Altor for helping us with all the technology here. And good luck. We'll be in touch. And we look forward to working with all of you again. Thank you so much for joining us. And if there's anything we can do, let us know. Be involved. Be involved. We're better together. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Better Bye. together.